Welcome to Manifest, hosted by international evangelist, teacher, and author Perry Stone. Enjoy unique insight into prophetic and practical truth. It's time to feast on fresh manna, so get ready to be blessed and encouraged. And now, here is your host and teacher, Perry Stone. Today on the Manifest program, I'm coming to you from Israel in the very heart of what is called the Judean wilderness, the ancient area of the tribe of Judah, but also the heart of the wilderness, the rugged wilderness that we read about throughout the Old Testament. And I'm going to bring to you a message today. And one of the reasons I came here is because of a scripture that reads like this. When the unclean spirit's gone out of a man, he walks through dry places seeking rest and finding none. So he says, I will return into my house from whence I came. But when he comes, he finds it swept and garnished. So what does he do? He takes seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of the man is worse than the first. I want you to notice in that passage of Scripture in St. Luke's Gospel that it talks about an evil spirit walking through dry places. One time, in fact, it was several years ago, I asked my guide, Gideon Shore, to look at his Hebrew Bible and tell me what the phrase dry places meant. And we, it was very intriguing because as we began to research this word together, it actually was a wilderness area similar to the Judean wilderness. One of the things that's significant about this wilderness has to do with Jericho. Directly behind me, you can see the green at the bottom of the hill, at the bottom of these mountains. That is the oasis of Jericho. Why is it important for me to talk about Jericho? When Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River, he was baptized in the area that you're looking at here where the Jordan River today, again, is the boundary of the country of Jordan and Israel. But in a place called Bet Arba, there was much water and Christ was baptized here. Then the Bible says that the Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Literally, by tradition, this is the area here. In fact, in the far distance directly behind me, you see some tall towers. This is the traditional area called the Mount of Temptation, where Satan brought Christ and for 40 days he was in the wilderness fasting and praying. Now imagine fasting in these conditions. No one really to talk to. You had to find springs. There is one water source that is in this particular area. But you have to find a water source. And imagine the desolate, barren wilderness, the heat, even the coolness at night, the scorpions and the serpents, all the different things that you would have encountered in this particular rugged area called again the Judean wilderness. Now, the reason I come here to share this with you today is I want to share with you a message that I have called Five Signs of Demonic Possession. Five Signs of Demonic Possession. There's different beliefs that people have about demonic power and demonic activity. There are those that don't believe in demonic spirits at all. They're unbelievers in the supernatural. There are then others who believe that everything is a spirit. And really, both of those are extremes on opposite ends. I believe that there are individuals around the world that are demonized, and that's a word that means controlled by an evil spirit. Now, I believe that there are many that are oppressed of demons, but they're not possessed by demons. I believe there's others that are vexed by spirits. There's others that have spirits of sickness, but they're not necessarily possessed to the point of not being able to control their, their life or control the things that they do. They just simply are oppressed by spirits. But today we want to talk about demonic possession. First of all, we have to understand the realm of the supernatural or the realm of spirits. Let me give you some scriptures from the New Testament and the words used to describe spirits and what those spirits mean biblically. Take a, le take a, uh, uh, take a look at the screen and we'll share these with you. Mark chapter 9, 25 talks about foul spirits. And this word means an impure spirit morally or spiritually. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1 talks about an unclean spirit, and that is actually the same Greek word used for foul spirit. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and 7 talks about a spirit of fear. Now, the Greek word for fear there is a spirit of intimidation. That's what it means. In 1 Timothy 4 and 1, it talks about seducing spirits. And that word seducing in the New Testament Greek means an imposter or someone that misleads. It's a spirit that misleads people and pulls them away from the truth. In Luke chapter 13 and verse 11, there's a spirit of infirmity. A spirit of infirmity is a spirit of weakness, feebleness, or even sickness. In Acts 16, 16, there's a spirit of divination. That Greek word is puthon, from where 
we get the word python. It was a spirit of python, and this was the same type of spirit that today works through psychics and individuals that believe in that type of thing. Then we have the spirit of bondage. Romans chapter 8 verse 15 talks about that, and it's a spirit of slavery to bring you back into the slavery of sin. Now Romans 11 and 8 talks about a spirit of slumber. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 talks about the spirit of the world, and also 1 John 4 and 3. In fact, in four places in uh, the epistle of 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, it mentions the word antichrist, or it mentions the spirit of antichrist uh, there in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 3. So there's different types of spirits, so we would call them demonic powers, that are working in the earth. Now that leads us to uh, the next story that we're going to talk about, and that is a man in the land of Gadara, which is located in the upper area of Galilee, around the Sea of Galilee, the mountains there. And we're going to talk about a man that in Mark chapter 5 was possessed by a legion of spirits. And we're going to give you the signs of demonic possession. Now someone may ask me, what do you mean, Perry, when you talk about demon possession? Well, first of all, I did a little word study here, and when we read in our English Bible the word possessed, for example, possessed by a spirit, the word possessed in the Greek is where we get the word demon, or to be demonized, or to be controlled by a spirit. Now, I did a little, what we call history of the word from, from the Greek to discover demon and what it means, and one of the meanings is to divide or to uh, distribute. In other words, it actually means that a demon tries to divide and conquer, tries to come in and one of the words I've written down here to cause division or to cause confusion. So anyone that is controlled by a demonic spirit will be extremely confused, extremely divided. And uh, the, the enemy tries to distribute his goods, his control, his, um, his bondages and distribute them into the life of that person once they have become confused or once they have become divided. Now, when we talk about the word possessed, the word possessed means to control. Here's the difference. A person that is vexed by a spirit, or we would say oppressed by a spirit, is someone that is pressed down. Their spirit is pressed down. Their heart is pressed down. Their heart is heavy. They have no joy, no peace. Sometimes a lot of confusion is in their heart, but they can be uh, vexed by a spirit. When a person is possessed by a spirit, they are driven to do things that they normally would not do. They are driven to actions that they normally would not perform. They're driven, driven to say words they normally would not say, even to people they love. So what I would like to do today is go to Mark chapter 5 and give you the five signs of demon possession. Now I want to make something very clear. This is very important. And before I prepare to teach this on the Manifest program today, I really felt like the Lord dealt with me to say this that just because you have a friend or you may be sitting at home saying, wait a minute, that sounds like me. One or two of these signs does not necessarily mean you are possessed by spirits because one or two of these signs could actually be brought about in your life by things you're doing or things that you're not doing or you'll see in a moment what I'm saying. But when you have someone who has all five of these signs taking place in their life, well, it could be that they're being controlled by a spirit. Let's look at Mark chapter 5. Now here was a man in the land of the Gadarenes and he had been so driven by evil spirits that the Bible said that he had a legion. Now a Roman legion was 4,800 men and it could go up to, in some cases, 6,000 men. Now I want you to think about a man having that many demonic spirits in him at one time. And that's why the word legion is used by the chief demon that was possessing him because there were many demons. And we know there were at least 2,000 because that's how many swine drowned when the evil spirits departed from the man and went into his body. Okay, let's look at some things together. Number one, the first sign this man was possessed was, first of all, he was awake day and night. The Bible tells us that night and day he was crying aloud in the tombs. Now, you find that there are individuals that are so tormented that they can't sleep at night and they stay up consistently night after night and they go sometimes two and three days without sleeping. Sometimes it's a result of drug addiction and other problems. But the fact that the man had no rest is a sign that he was being controlled by a spirit, an evil spirit, how be it. So in other words, the Bible tells us that God gives his beloved rest. When we rest in the spirit, we can get a good night's sleep and that's biblical. But this man was tormented day and night. Now the second thing was this. The second sign of demon possession was he was running from those who cared the most about him. In other words, we read in the Bible that he had friends and he also had family. 
but he wasn't staying with his friends or family. He was fleeing from them and separating himself from people he loves. Now that brings me to the next very important point of this message, that if you are someone who needs help, 